Hold up. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to Joe's Productions. In this video, we are exploring the important themes of the time period 1491 to 1607, otherwise known as period one in the eight push world. In the description below, you can download a graphic organizer to help you take notes. So let's get it going. The first big topic you're gonna wanna know about is Native American societies before European contact. As native populations migrated and settled across the vast expanse of North America over time, way back in the day, like 50,000 BCE, people began migrating from Asia across the Bering Strait land Bridge all the way from present-day Canada down into the southern tip of South America. They developed distinct and increasingly complex societies by adapting to and transforming their diverse environments. Now we use the term pre-Columbian societies because this is the period before some folks thought Columbus in 1492 discovered part of India. In this process, different societies adapted to and transformed their environments through innovations in agriculture, resource use, and social structure. And as these bands of people spread across the continent, from areas as diverse as colder than a polar bear's toenails, Alaska, to the hot and dry Southwest, to areas with fertile soil and easily accessible water in the East, indigenous people not only transform their environments, but the map right there reveals just some of the diverse cultures and ways of life that develop. The spread of maize cultivation from present day Mexico northward into the present day American Southwest and beyond supported economic development, settlement, advanced irrigation, and social diversification among societies. Maize or corn began to be cultivated by indigenous people in Mexico and it rapidly spread. It was the main food source for many of the tribes in the southwestern part of the United States and after the arrival of Europeans it will spread around the world. But the origin of maize cultivation is in Mexico and it will spread very rapidly. An example of maize cultivation having a huge impact can be seen in what is the present day New Mexico and Arizona. The Pueblo people of the American Southwest crafted adobe structures and relied on irrigation to not only grow maize, but also squash and beans. Many of these tribes utilize a method of agriculture called the three sister technique of planting, where they plant squash, corn, and beans to maximize harvest. So you could see native people in this region adapting to the dry environment and innovating and as a result, developing complex societies. Societies responded to the dryness of the Great Basin and the grasslands of the Western Great Plains by developing largely mobile lifestyles. The Sioux people on the Great Plains, as a result of lack of natural resources and fertile soil, relied on a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle on the Great Plains. Part of the reason they were hunters and gatherers was because of the extreme importance of hunting bison. So you gotta move where the animals are. And as a result, in these two regions, you're gonna see mainly a nomadic hunter-gatherer type society develop. In contrast, in the Northwest, the Mississippi River Valley and along the Atlantic seaboard, some societies developed mixed agricultural and hunter-gatherer economies that favored the development of permanent villages. So in this region, you had tribes like the Huron and the Iroquois, some of which formed political alliances with nearby tribes. Many of these tribes developed a mixed way of life with farming for part of the year, as well as hunting and gathering and fur trapping. Keep tribes in this region in mind, especially when the showdown happens in the 1750s between the French and the British and the colonies in the Ohio River Valley. And just east of the Mississippi River, you had different groups of Native Americans build large mound structures. And this really reveals the establishment of sophisticated pre-Columbian societies. And having food surpluses in this area allowed for permanent settlements in the region to develop. Societies in the Northwest and present day California supported themselves by hunting and gathering, and in some areas developed settled communities supported by the vast resources of the ocean. One example would be the Chumash tribe that inhabited my neck of the woods, southern part of California. They practiced hunting and gathering, as well as fishing off the coast. And there's a variety of tribes in the Pacific Northwest which also adapted in this manner, taking advantage of the abundant resources found in the Pacific Ocean by utilizing dugout canoes and developing their own unique societies. The next big theme is European exploration in the Americas. European nations' efforts to explore and conquer the new world stem from a search for new sources of wealth, economic and military competition, and a desire to spread Christianity. The decline of European feudalism led to a rise of powerful nation states looking for new sources of wealth and trade, resources such as gold, silver would be in demand, and the process of European colonization will further this, the move towards capitalism. In addition, the Ottoman Empire threatened very profitable trade routes in the Eastern Mediterranean and made accessing the Asian market much more difficult, so nations such as Spain and Portugal 
Portugal began to send out expeditions into the Atlantic looking for a new way to get to Asia. And what you see happening is by the end of the 15th century, Portugal and Spain sponsored expeditions that would explore and colonize the west coast of Africa and eventually in the Americas, looking for wealth, trade routes, increasing political power, and trying to spread Christianity. And if you need a simple way to remember this, think of gold, glory, God, the three G's. Now, most folks know this part of the story, the Colombian exchange, Spanish exploration and conquest. In 1492, Columbus arrives in the Western Hemisphere when he sails on behalf of Spain to the Caribbean. Now, it is odd to discover something that anywhere between 30 to 70 million indigenous people were living in. This is just a rough estimate since there was no census back in the day to do population counts of the Western Hemisphere, but whatever. And while Spain is first, it's important to note that Portugal had already been on the move as well. Remember Vasco da Gama succeeded in sailing around the tip of Africa into the Indian Ocean, which is going to further peak interest in accessing the Asian market. Part of the reasons these expeditions are able to take place was because of technological advancements and innovations. Improvements in maritime technology and more organized methods for conducting international trade, such as joint stock companies, help drive changes to economies in Europe and the Americas. So you have newly designed ships such as the Caravel, which were much more maneuverable. You have the Sextant, which allowed explorers to determine latitude of their ship. Think of it as a super old school GPS. And these and other improvements in maritime technology made long distance sea travel not only safer, but much more efficient. And the emergence of joint stock companies allowed for this exploration and colonization to be funded by creating a company that would raise large sums of money and decrease the risk for individual investors. So all these things helped fuel European exploration and conquest. The Columbian Exchange brought new crops to Europe from the Americas, stimulating European population growth and new sources of mineral wealth, which facilitated the European shift from feudalism to capitalism. As you can see, basically the Columbian Exchange is the transfer of people, animals, plants, technology, disease, culture, ideas between the Americas, Africa, and Europe. And it's gonna have a huge impact on all parts of the world. For example, maize and potatoes are products of the Western Hemisphere, and they were responsible for large increases in the population of Europe. Mineral wealth, especially gold and silver, like that gold bar Cortez melted down from Aztec treasures, helped speed the transition from feudalism to capitalism, and all of the trade of the colonies will be regulated under the concept of mercantilism. More on that a little later. While Europe will experience a population boom, Spanish exploration and the conquest of the Americas were accompanied and furthered by widespread deadly epidemics that devastated native populations and by the introduction of crops and animals not found in the Americas. Another consequence of the Columbian Exchange will be the spread of disease, especially smallpox, which will decimate many indigenous groups. And native life will be forever changed in other ways. The introduction of horses by the Spanish will be a game changer for many tribes especially on the Great Plains, there will also be some unintended consequences from this Colombian exchange. For example, while sugar being brought to the New World will definitely make chocolate taste so much more yummy, it will also lead to the rise of sugar plantations in places like Brazil and the Caribbean, which will eventually lead to a rapid growth of African slavery. The next big topic is labor, slavery, and caste in the Spanish colonial system. With the arrival of Columbus, Spain claims territory first, but over the next century, more European colonizers would follow. While Portugal would claim areas along the coast of what would become Brazil, Spain will early on establish themselves as the main power in the Western Hemisphere. In the encomienda system, Spanish colonial economies marshaled Native American labor to support plantation-based agriculture and extract precious metals and other resources. So these Spanish conquistadors were often given encomiendas. These were very valuable grants of land that included indigenous people who served served as basically enslaved manual labor. The expectation was not only would the indigenous people serve as labor, but they would be Christianized and forced to adopt Catholicism. So this is basically a form of slavery. European traders partnered with some West African groups who practiced slavery to forcibly extract slave labor for the Americas. The Spanish imported enslaved Africans to labor in plantation, agriculture, and mining. Over time, native labor would not be adequate to meet the demands of colonization. And a couple of reasons for this, native people were being decimated by disease and the growth of the plantation agriculture system led Led to a huge demand for labor. European powers took advantage of the fact that some powerful African tribes 
controlled and had developed a practice of kidnapping and selling other African people into slavery and coastal slave markets in West Africa developed and millions of West Africans were sent to the Western Hemisphere along the horrific Middle Passage. As you can see from the graphic, most of those kidnapped from West Africa were forcibly transported across the Atlantic to plantations in the Caribbean, Brazil, and the Southern American colonies, but you're gonna see slavery develop in all parts of the Western Hemisphere in all of the 13 colonies. The Spanish developed a caste system that incorporated and carefully defined the status of the diverse population of Europeans, Africans, and Native Americans in their empire. And as a result of this process of colonization, there was this mixture of European, indigenous, and African people. And colonization will also lead to the emergence of entirely new racial combinations. Mestizos were a mix of European and Native American blood. Mulattoes were a mixture of African and European blood. And as you can see by this graphic, in the Spanish colonies, a caste system developed in which not only money and power, but also race dictated social status. The last big idea of period one is cultural interactions between Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans. In their interactions, Europeans and Native Americans asserted divergent worldviews regarding issues such as religion, gender roles, family, land use, and power. By the end of the 16th century, Spain had control over most of South America, Central America, parts of the Caribbean, and what would become Mexico and the American Southwest. And a very important point, the colonization by various European powers was built on the belief that European civilization was superior. As a result, mutual misunderstandings between Europeans and Native Americans often defined the early years of interaction as each group sought to make sense of the other. Over time, Europeans and Native Americans adopted some useful aspects of each other's culture. The map you see right there is roughly colonization as, as of the 1750s, but it's important to note that many tribes are gonna adapt in different ways. So tribes on the Great Plains, such as the Sioux, are gonna adopt the horse. Tribes such as the Huron will readily trade with French colonists in the Ohio River Valley areas. The fur trade's gonna develop. So you're gonna see a variety of responses of Native American people. As European encroachments on Native American lands and demands on their labor increase, Native peoples sought to defend and maintain their political sovereignty economic prosperity, religious beliefs, and concepts of gender relations through diplomatic negotiations and military resistance. You will see, especially when looking at Spanish and French colonization in North America, there will be moments of negotiation, cooperation, and trade, but native people will also utilize military resistance at times. Regardless of method of resistance, native people sought to maintain cultural and political autonomy. They sought to maintain their independence, their cultural traditions, basically their way of life. A great example of this resistance can be seen in the Pueblo Revolt, which took place in 1680 in what is today the state of New Mexico. There's lots of different indigenous groups in this area, and the Spaniards were outnumbered. And a leader named Pope mobilized thousands of indigenous people to rise up against Spanish colonization. And during the Pueblo Revolt, a number of Spanish missionaries were killed and the Spanish were forced out of the Santa Fe region for nearly 15 years. And particularly after the Pueblo Revolt, you're gonna see some accommodation by the Spanish of Native American culture. And finally, extended contact with Native Americans and Africans fostered a debate among European religious and political leaders about how non-Europeans should be treated, as well as evolving religious, cultural, and racial justifications for the subjugation of Africans and Native Americans. Very few Europeans questioned this conquest. One who did question the brutality of Spanish conquest was Bartolomeu de las Casas, and in 1552, he published a short account of the destruction of the Indies, in which he documented the abuses committed during Spanish colonization. Quick review of the big ideas. Make sure you know pre-Columbian Native American life was quite diverse. Variety of motives for European expansion. The Columbian exchange dramatically changed life in the Americas. Europe and Africa, and Native people sought to maintain their cultural, political, social, and economic autonomy. In the description below, you will find a link to a quick review game, get the high score, and get some A-push street cred. There's another link in the description for links to more videos and study guides to help you understand the period. And finally, here it is, the meme of the time period. And as always, if the video helped you out, click like, leave a comment, tell your secret crush about the channel, and subscribe. Have a beautiful day. Peace.